Johannesburg, Afrikaans, J. Ansbor Kai, also known as Josie, Joburg, and Egoli is the largest city in South Africa and one of the 50 largest urban areas in the world. It is the provincial capital and largest city of Gauteng, which is the wealthiest province in South Africa. While Johannesburg is not one of South Africa's three capital cities, it is the seat of the Constitutional Court. The city is located in the mineral-rich Witwatersrand range of hills and is the center of large-scale gold and diamond trade. The metropolis is an alpha global city as listed by the Globalization and World Cities Research Network. In 2011, the population of the city of Johannesburg was 4,434,827, making it the most populous city in South Africa. In the same year, the population of Johannesburg's urban agglomeration was put at 7,860,781. The land area of the municipal city, 1,645 square kilometers, 635 square miles, is large in comparison with those of other major cities, resulting in a moderate population density of 2,364 per square kilometers, 6,120 per square miles. The city was established in 1886 following the discovery of gold on what had been a farm. The city is commonly interpreted as the modern-day El Dorado due to the extremely large gold deposit found along the Witwatersrand. The name is attributed to one or all of three men involved in the establishment of the city. In ten years, the population grew to 100,000 inhabitants. A separate city from the late 1970s until 1994, Soweto is now part of Johannesburg. Originally an acronym for Southwestern Townships, Soweto originated as a collection of settlements on the outskirts of Johannesburg, populated mostly by native African workers from the gold mining industry. Soweto, although eventually incorporated into Johannesburg, had been separated as a residential area for blacks, who were not permitted to live in Johannesburg proper. Lanasia is predominantly populated by English speaking South Africans of Indian descent. These areas were designated as non-white areas in accordance with the segregationist policies of the South African government known as apartheid. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology. <inaudible> Controversy surrounds the origin of the name. There was quite a number of people with the name Johannes who were involved in the early history of the city. Among them are the principal clerk attached to the office of the surveyor general Hendrik Dirksen, Christian Johannes Joubert, who was a member of the Volksrad and was Republic's chief of mining. Another was Stephanus Johannes Paulus Kruger, better known as Paul Kruger, president of the South African Republic from 1883 to 1900. Johannes Meyer, the first government official in the area is another possibility. Precise records for the choice of name were lost. Johannes Rissick and Johannes Joubert were members of a delegation sent to England to attain mining rights for the area. Joubert had a park in the city named after him and Rissick has his name for one of the main streets in the city where the historically important albeit dilapidated Rissick Street post office is located. The city hall is also located on Rissick Street. History The region surrounding Johannesburg was originally inhabited by San people. By the 13th century, groups of Bantu-speaking people started moving southwards from Central Africa and encroached on the indigenous San population. By the mid-18th century, the broader region was largely settled by various Sutu Sawana communities one linguistic branch of Bantu speakers, whose villages, towns, chiefdoms and kingdoms stretched from what is now Botswana in the west, to present-day Lesotho in the south, to the present-day petty areas of the northern province. More specifically, the stone-walled ruins of Sutu Sawana towns and villages are scattered around the parts of the former Transvaal province in which Johannesburg is situated. The Sutu Sawana practiced farming and extensively mined and smelted metals that were available in the area. Moreover, from the early 1960s until his retirement, Professor Revel Mason of the University of the Witwatersrand, explored and documented many late Iron Age archaeological sites throughout the Johannesburg area. These sites dated from between the 12th century and 18th century, and many contained the ruins of Sutu Sawana mines and iron smelting furnaces, suggesting that the area was being exploited for its mineral wealth before the arrival of Europeans or the discovery of gold. 
The most prominent site within Johannesburg is Melville Copies, which contains an iron smelting furnace. Many Sutu Sawana towns and villages in the areas around Johannesburg were destroyed and their people driven away during the wars emanating from Zululand during the late 18th and early 19th centuries, the Mafakane or Defakan Wars, and as a result, an offshoot of the Zulu Kingdom, the Dabeli, often referred to as the Matabili, the name given them by the local Sutu Sawana, set up a kingdom to the northwest of Johannesburg around modern day Rustenburg. Gold rush and naming of the city The main Witwatersrand gold reef was discovered in June 1884 on the farm Vogelstruisfontein by Jan Geritzi Bantjes that triggered the Witwatersrand gold rush and the start of Johannesburg in 1886. The discovery of gold rapidly attracted people to the area, making necessary a name and governmental organization for the area. Johan and Johannes were common male names among the Dutch of that time, two men involved in surveying the area for the best location of the city, Christian Johannes Joubert and Johan Rissick, are considered the source of the name by some. Johannes Meyer, the first government official in the area is another possibility. Precise records for the choice of name were lost. Within 10 years, the city of Johannesburg included 100,000 people. In September 1884, the Struben brothers discovered the Confidence Reef on the farm Wilgisprate near present day Rudaport, which further boosted excitement over gold prospects. The first gold to be crushed on the Witwatersrand was the gold bearing rock from the Bantjes mine crushed using the Struben brothers' stamp machine. Also, news of the discovery soon reached Kimberley and directors Cecil Rhodes with Sir Joseph Robinson rode up to investigate rumours for themselves. They were guided to the Bantjes camp with its tent strung out over several kilometres and stayed with Bantjes for two nights. In 1884, they purchased the first pure refined gold from Bantjes for £3,000. Incidentally, Bantjes had since 1881 been operating the Cromdry gold mine in the Cradle of Humankind together with his partner Johannes Stephanus Minar where they first discovered gold in 1881, and which also offered another kind of discovery, the early ancestors of all mankind. Some report Australian George Harrison as the first to make a claim for gold in the area that became Johannesburg, as he found gold on a farm in July 1886. He did not stay in the area. Gold was earlier discovered some 400 kilometers, 249 miles to the east of present-day Johannesburg in Barberton. Gold prospectors soon discovered the richer gold reefs of the Witwatersrand offered by Bantjes. The original miners' camp under the informal leadership of Colonel Ignatius Ferreira was located in the Fordsburg dip, possibly because water was available there and because of the site's proximity to the diggings. Following upon the establishment of Johannesburg, the area was taken over by the government who had it surveyed and named it Ferreras Township, today the suburb of Ferrerasdorp. The first settlement at Ferreras Camp was established as a tented camp and which soon reached a population of 3,000 by 1887. The government took over the camp, surveyed it and named it Ferreras Township. By 1896, Johannesburg was established as a city of over 100,000 inhabitants, one of the fastest growth cities ever. Mines near Johannesburg are among the deepest in the world, with some as deep as 4,000 meters. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Rapid Growth, Jameson Raid and the Second Boer War. Like many late 19th century mining towns, Johannesburg was a rough and disorganized place, populated by white miners from all continents, African tribesmen recruited to perform unskilled mine work, African women beer brewers who cooked for and sold beer to the black migrant workers, a very large number of European prostitutes, gangsters, impoverished Afrikaners, tradesmen, and Zulu, Amawasha. Zulu men who surprisingly dominated laundry work. As the value of control of the land increased, tensions developed between the Boer government in Pretoria and the British, culminating in the Jameson Raid that ended in fiasco at Dornkop in January 1896 and the Second Boer War 1899 that saw British forces under Field Marshal Frederick Slay Roberts, 1st Earl Roberts, occupy the city on 30 May 1900 after a series of battles to the southwest of its then limits, near present-day Krugersdorp. Fighting took place at the Gatsrin Pass near Zachariah Park on the 27th of May.
May, north of Van Wicksrust, today's Nansfield, Eldorado Park and Naturina, the next day, culminating in a mass infantry attack on what is now the Waterworks Ridge in Chiawelo and Sanaoane on 29 May during the war, many African mineworkers left Johannesburg creating a labor shortage, which the mines ameliorated by bringing in laborers from China, especially southern China. After the war, they were replaced by black workers, but many Chinese stayed on, creating Johannesburg's Chinese community, which during the apartheid era, was not legally classified as Asian, but as colored. The population in 1904 was 155,642, of whom 83,363 were whites. Post-Union history Major building developments took place in the 1930s, after South Africa went off the gold standard. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, Hillbrow went high-rise. In the 1950s and early 1960s, the apartheid government constructed the massive agglomeration of townships that became known as Soweto. New freeways encouraged massive suburban sprawl to the north of the city. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, tower blocks including the Carlton Center and the Southern Life Center filled the skyline of the central business district. The central area of the city underwent something of a decline in the 1980s and 1990s, due to the high crime rate and when property speculators directed large amounts of capital into suburban shopping malls, decentralized office parks, and entertainment centers. Santon City was opened in 1973, followed by Rosebank Mall in 1976, and Eastgate in 1979. On 12 May 2008, a series of riots started in the township of Alexandra, in the northeastern part of Johannesburg, when locals attacked migrants from Mozambique, Malawi, and Zimbabwe, killing two people and injuring 40 others. These riots sparked the xenophobic attacks of 2008. A completely refurbished Soccer City Stadium in Johannesburg hosted the 2010 FIFA World Cup final. Topic: <inaudible> Redevelopment of industrial heritage. The redevelopment of Newtown was inevitable and part of the reason why the city and heritage bodies decided to keep the facades of the old buildings and apportion new meaning to it was because part of the identity of the area was forged in the old buildings. It was known throughout its redevelopment as the Newtown Cultural Precinct it was therefore important to stage, old renovated buildings as the setting of the new precinct. Demolishing the old structures and replacing them with new buildings would not have achieved the same effect. Everyone played their part in the marketing, branding and the new identity of the precinct, the city, heritage bodies, heritage practitioners, private companies all played a part. The old warehouse industrial buildings that once lay decaying in Newtown are now synonymous with culture and flair. The 1930s industrial architecture has been transformed into classy boutiques and restaurants that are patronized by the middle to upper class residents and workers of the filming studios and offices that surround the area. The precinct has proved to be a popular center and developers are interested to expand the area and connect it to the CBD. Johannesburg Gas Works, a huge property of 14 hectares lies vacant and has been targeted for development. Like many cities around the world there is an increasing focus on the rejuvenation of the inner city of Johannesburg. One of these initiatives is the Mabonang district located in the southeastern side of the CBD, originally a hub for art. It has expanded to include restaurants, entertainment venues and retail stores as well as accommodation and hotels. Mabonang calls itself a place of inspiration, a creative hub, a place to do business, a destination for visitors and a safe, integrated community for residents. A beacon of strength in Africa's most economically prosperous city, after being destroyed in 2008 to make way for a motor showroom by Imperial Holdings, the iconic Rand Steam Laundries are now being redeveloped as an exact replica, by the order of the Johannesburg Heritage Council. Apart from one filtration shed, there is nothing left on the site after being destroyed. The site will consist of a 5,100 square meters precinct. Geography Johannesburg is located in the eastern plateau area of South Africa known as the Highveld, at an elevation of 1,753 metres 5,751 feet. The former central business district is located on the southern side of the prominent ridge called the Witwatersrand Afrikaans, White Waters Ridge and the terrain falls to the north and south. 
By and large the Witwatersrand marks the watershed between the Limpopo and Val rivers as the northern part of the city is drained by the Juxke River while the southern part of the city, including most of the central business district, is drained by the Klip River. The north and west of the city has undulating hills while the eastern parts are flatter. Johannesburg may not be built on a river or harbour, but its streams contribute to two of southern Africa's mightiest rivers, the Limpopo and the Orange. Most of the springs from which many of these streams emanate are now covered in concrete and canalist, accounting for the fact that the names of early farms in the area often end with fontine, meaning spring, in Afrikaans. Bromfontein, Rietfontein, Zevenfontein, Dornfontein, Zanfontein and Randjesfontein are some examples. When the first white settlers reached the area that is now Johannesburg, they noticed the glistening rocks on the ridges, running with trickles of water, fed by the streams, giving the area its name, the Witwatersrand, the Ridge of White Waters. Another explanation is that the whiteness comes from the quartzite rock, which has a particular sheen to it after rain. The site was not chosen solely for its streams, however. One of the main reasons the city was founded where it stands today was because of the gold. Indeed, the city once sat near massive amounts of gold, given that at one point the Witwatersrand gold industry produced 40% of the planet's gold. Topic. Climate Johannesburg is situated on the Highveld Plateau, and has a subtropical highland climate the city enjoys a sunny climate, with the summer months October to April characterized by hot days followed by afternoon thundershowers and cool evenings, and the winter months May to September by dry, sunny days followed by cold nights. Temperatures in Johannesburg are usually fairly mild due to the city's high elevation, with an average maximum daytime temperature in January of 25.6 degrees Celsius .1 degrees Fahrenheit, dropping to an average maximum of around 16 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit in June. The UV index for Johannesburg in summers is extreme, often reaching 14 to 16 due to the high elevation and its location in the subtropics. Winter is the sunniest time of the year, with mild days and cool nights, dropping to 4.1 degrees Celsius (39.4 degrees Fahrenheit) in June and July. The temperature occasionally drops to below freezing at night, causing frost. Snow is a rare occurrence, with snowfall having been experienced in the 20th century during May 1956 August 1962, June 1964 and September 1981. In the 21st century, there was light sleet in 2006, as well as snow proper on 27 June 2007 accumulating up to 10 cm 4 in, in the southern suburbs and 7 August 2012, regular cold fronts pass over in winter bringing very cold southerly winds but usually clear skies. The annual average rainfall is 713 mm in, which is mostly concentrated in the summer months. Infrequent showers occur through the course of the winter months. The lowest nighttime minimum temperature ever recorded in Johannesburg is minus 8.2 degrees Celsius .2 degrees Fahrenheit, on 13 June 1979. The lowest daytime maximum temperature recorded is 1.5 degrees Celsius .7 degrees Fahrenheit, on 19 June 1964. Demographics. According to the 2011 South African National Census, the population of Johannesburg is 4,434,827 people. From the 2001 census, the people live in 1,006,930 formal households, of which 86% have a flush or chemical toilet, and 91% have refuse removed by the municipality at least once a week. 81% of households have access to running water, and 80% use electricity as the main source of energy. 29% of Johannesburg residents stay in informal dwellings. 66% of households are headed by one person. Blacks account for 73% of the population, followed by whites at 16%, colorids at 6% and Asians at 4%. 42% of the population is under the age of 24, while 6% of the population is over 60 years of age. 37% of city residents are unemployed. 91% of the unemployed are black African. Women comprise 43% of the working population. 
19% of economically active adults work in wholesale and retail sectors, 18% in financial, real estate and business services, 17% in community, social and personal services and 12% are in manufacturing. Only 0.7% work in mining. 32% of Johannesburg residents speak Nuni languages at home, 24% speak Sotho languages, 18% speak English, 7% speak Afrikaans and 6% speak Shivenda, 29% of adults have graduated from high school. 14% have higher education university or technical school, 7% of residents are completely illiterate, 15% have primary education. 34% use public transportation to commute to work or school. 32% walk to work or school. 34% use private transportation to travel to work or school. 53% belong to mainstream Christian churches, 24% are not affiliated with any organized religion, 14% are members of African independent churches, 3% are Muslim, 1% are Jewish and 1% are Hindu. Johannesburg has a large The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints LDS Church membership, with around 48,112 members, and had the first LDS temple built in Africa. It was dedicated in 1985 and is located in the historic suburb of Parktown. Within the Metropolitan Municipality, the Old Center, established in 1886 and given city status in 1928, has been listed in recent censuses as a main place. As of 2011, this main place had a population of 957,441 and an area of 334.81 square kilometers. 2011 demographic statistics. Area: 334.81 square kilometers, 129.27 square miles. Population: 957,441 to 2,859.68 inhabitants per square kilometer, 7,406.5 per square miles. Households: 300,199 to 896.63 per square kilometer, 2,322.3 per square miles. Johannesburg's urban agglomeration spreads well beyond the administrative boundary of the municipality. The population of the whole area has been estimated to be variously at 7,860,781 in 2011 by citypopulation.de or 8,880,000 in 2016 by Demographia for Johannesburg East Rand. 41st highest in the world, the area of this urban agglomeration was put by Demographia to be 2,590 square kilometers, 31st largest in the world. Some authors consider the metropolitan area to include most of Gauteng province. The UN's population division in 2016 estimated the metropolitan area population to be 9,616,000. Suburbs Johannesburg's suburbs are the product of urban sprawl and are regionalized into north, south, east and west, and they generally have different personalities. While the central business district and the immediate surrounding areas were formerly desirable living areas, the spatial accommodation of the suburbs has tended to see a flight from the city and immediate surrounds. The inner city buildings have been let out to the lower income groups and illegal immigrants and as a result abandoned buildings and crime have become a feature of inner city life. The immediate city suburbs include Yeovil, a hot spot for black nightlife despite its otherwise poor reputation. The suburbs to the south of the city are mainly blue-collar neighborhoods and situated closer to some townships. Greater Johannesburg consists of more than 500 suburbs in an area covering more than 200 square miles 520 square kilometers. Although black Africans can be found throughout Johannesburg and its surrounding area, Greater Johannesburg remains highly racially segregated. The suburbs to the west have in recent years floundered with the decline of the mining industry but have in some cases experienced some revival with properties being bought up by the local African middle class. The biggest sprawl lies to the east and north. The eastern suburbs are relatively prosperous and close to various industrial zones. The northern suburbs have been the recipient of most of the flight from the inner city with the city starting to sprawl northwards and multiple secondary CBDs forming in the north towards Pretoria. 
Traditionally the northern and northwestern suburbs have been the center for the wealthy, containing the high-end retail shops as well as several upper-class residential areas such as Hyde Park, Sandhurst, Northcliffe, Hurlingham, Bryanston and Houghton, where Nelson Mandela made his home. The northwestern area in particular is vibrant and lively, with the mostly black suburb of Sofiatown once center of political activity and the bohemian-flavored Melville featuring restaurants and nightlife. Auckland Park is home to the headquarters of the South African Broadcasting Corporation, AFDA, the South African School of Motion Picture and Live Performance, and the University of Johannesburg. To the southwest of the city centre is Soweto, a township constructed during apartheid for housing displaced black South Africans then living in areas designated for white settlement. To the south of Johannesburg is Lanasia, a predominantly Asian neighbourhood which was constructed during apartheid specifically to house Asians. Closer to Alexandria communities like Glenazel and Norwood have been integral in the urban landscape of Johannesburg. Topic. Cityscape The city is often described as Africa's economic powerhouse, and contentiously as a modern and prosperous African city. Johannesburg, like many metropolises, has more than one central business district CBD, including, but not limited to, Santon, Rosebank and Rudaport in addition to the original CBD. Some tend to include Benoni and Germiston as well. Due to its many different central districts Johannesburg would fall under the multiple nuclei model in human geography terms. It is the hub of South Africa's commercial, financial, industrial, and mining undertakings. Johannesburg is part of a larger urban region. It is closely linked with several other satellite towns. Randburg and Sandton form part of the northern area. The east and west ridges spread out from central Johannesburg. The central business district covers an area of 6 square kilometers 2 square miles. It consists of closely packed skyscrapers such as the Carlton Center, Marble Towers, Trust Bank Building, Ponte City Apartments, Southern Life Center and 11 Diagonal Street. Johannesburg's city center retains its elements of a rectangular grid pattern that were first officially recorded in 1886. Streets are narrow and filled with high-rises built in the mid to late 1900s. Old Victorian-era buildings first built in the late 1800s have been torn down long ago. The 1900s brought along with it the introduction of many different architectural styles and structures. The Johannesburg Art Gallery and Supreme Court Building being two examples. These were important Beaux-Arts structures, with the style put in place by at the time, colonial parent, the British Empire. South Africa didn't borrow architectural techniques exclusively from Britain, however. They were also inspired by American models and styles, having built several structures like the Escombe Building and the Corner House to emulate the prowess of New York City, located in the United States. Topic. Architecture. Johannesburg is home to some of Africa's tallest structures, such as the Sentec Tower, Hillbrow Tower, the Carlton Center and Ponte City Apartments. The Johannesburg city skyline has most of the tallest buildings on the continent and contains most international organizations such as IBM, ABSA, BHP Billiton, Willis Group, First National Bank, Nedbank and Standard Bank. Many of the city's older buildings have been demolished and more modern ones built in their place. North of the CBD is Hillbrow, the most densely populated residential area in southern Africa. Northwest of the CBD is Bromfontein, a secondary CBD housing many offices and business premises. The CBD is predominated by four styles of architecture, being Victorian colonial, Edwardian Baroque, Art Deco and Modernism. Topic. Parks and gardens Parks and gardens in Johannesburg are maintained by Johannesburg City Parks and Zoo. City Parks is also responsible for planting the city's many green trees, making Johannesburg one of the greenest cities in the world. It has been estimated that there are 6 million trees in the city with the number growing every year 1.2 million on pavements and sidewalks, and a further 4.8 million in private gardens. City Parks continues to invest in planting trees, particularly those previously disadvantaged areas of Johannesburg which were not positive beneficiaries of apartheid Johannesburg's urban planning. Johannesburg Botanical Garden, located in the suburb of Emerentia, is a popular recreational park. 
Topic: Transport. Johannesburg is a young and sprawling city, with its public transportation built in its infancy, geared towards private motorists, and lacks a convenient public transportation system. The city though has invested a large percentage of its budget toward an effective integrated public transportation system, a significant number of the city's residents are dependent on the city's informal minibus taxis. Johannesburg is served principally by OR Tombo International Airport formerly Johannesburg International Airport and before that Jan Smuts Airport for both domestic and international flights. Lanseria Airport, located to the northwest of the city and closer to the business hub of Santon, is used for commercial flights to Cape Town, Durban, Port Elizabeth, Botswana, and Sun City. Other airports include Rand Airport and Grand Central Airport. Rand Airport, located in Germiston, is a small airfield used mostly for private aircraft and the home of South African Airways' first Boeing 747 Classic, the Labombo, which is now an aviation museum. Grand Central is located in Midrand and also caters to small, private aircraft. Johannesburg shares a network of metropolitan routes with Krugersdorp and Eckerhelene. Johannesburg has two kinds of taxis, metered taxis and minibus taxis. Unlike many cities, metered taxis are not allowed to drive around the city looking for passengers and instead must be called and ordered to a destination. The Gauteng Provincial Government has launched a new metered taxi program in an attempt to increase use of metered taxis in the city. The minibus taxis are the de facto standard and essential form of transport for the majority of the population. Since the 1980s, the minibus taxi industry has been severely affected by turf wars. The Metrorail Gauteng commuter rail system connects central Johannesburg to Soweto, Pretoria, and most of the satellite towns along the Witwatersrand. The railways transport huge numbers of commuters every day. However, the Metrorail infrastructure was built in Johannesburg's infancy and covers only the older areas in the city's south. The northern areas, including the business districts of Sandton, Midrand, Randburg, and Rosebank, are served by the rapid rail link Gatrain. A part of the Gauteng Provincial Government's Blue IQ project, Gatrain has made provision for a rapid rail link, running north to south, between Johannesburg and Pretoria, and west to east between Santon and the OR Tombo International Airport. Construction of the Gatrain Rapid Rail started in October 2006 and was completed in June 2012. It consists of a number of underground stations, as well as aboveground stations. Stations on the north-south line include Johannesburg's Park Station underground, Rosebank underground, Santon underground, Marlborough above ground and raised, Midrand, Pretoria Station and Hatfield. There is also a line from the OR. Tombo International Airport above ground and raised traveling to Santon via Rhodesfield raised and Marlborough. A 200-kilometer expansion is underway and will consist of three new lines and 18 new stations. This may sound like an insignificant amount however it is expected to cost R18 billion and one line Soweto Mamalodi could take six years to build. Most of the new stations will be in Johannesburg. The east-west line from the airport to Sandton opened in June 2010 in time for the 2010 FIFA World Cup, while the north-south line opened on 2 August 2011, except for Park Station, which opened in 2012. The rail system was designed to alleviate traffic on the N1 freeway between Johannesburg and Pretoria, which records vehicle loads of up to 300,000 per week's day. An extensive bus feeder system has also been implemented, which allows access to the main stations from the outer suburbs, but is limited to a 5-kilometer radius, which neglects the rest of the suburbs. This is the first new major railway system that has been laid in South Africa since 1977. In 2010, a high speed rail link was proposed between Johannesburg and Durban. Johannesburg is served by a bus fleet operated by Metrobus, a corporate unit of the city of Johannesburg. It has a fleet consisting of approximately 550 single and double decker buses, plying 84 different routes in the city. This total includes 200 modern buses, 150 double deckers, and 50 single deckers, made by Volvo, Scania AB, and Marco Polo, Brasa in 2002. Metrobus fleet carries approximately 20 million passengers per annum. In addition, there are a number of private bus operators, though most focus on the intercity routes, or on bus charters for touring groups. The city's main bus terminus is situated in Gandhi Square, where passengers can also obtain information regarding the Metrobus service from the walk in customer information desk. 
In 2010, in order to create an efficient public transport system the Ray Via Bus Rapid System was developed, built. The buses run on their own dedicated bus lanes on the main trunk and complementary routes. The buses also have a large feeder routes that run on ordinary roads. The Ray Via works on a smart card payment system. On entering the station or bus, the passenger taps his her smart card onto the validator scanner and taps out at the next station with the calculated amount, calculated according to distance approximately 50 cents per 5 kilometers. The routes cover both the southern and northern suburbs with the main trunk route running from Soweto to Santon and Rosebank, and the feeder and complementary routes covering most of Johannesburg, with the notable exceptions of Midrand and Centurion. A subsequent expansion phase 1C, 1D, will cover these areas. Topic. Roads The fact that Johannesburg is not near a large navigable body of water has meant that ground transportation has been the most important method of transporting people and goods in and out of the city. One of Africa's most famous beltways, or ring roads, orbitals is the Johannesburg Ring Road. The road is composed of three freeways that converge on the city, forming an 80-kilometre loop around it, the N3 Eastern Bypass, which links Johannesburg with Durban, the N1 Western Bypass, which links Johannesburg with Pretoria and Cape Town, and the N12 Southern Bypass, which links Johannesburg with Whitbank and Kimberley. The N3 was built exclusively with asphalt, while the N12 and N1 sections were made with concrete, hence the nickname given to the N1 Western Bypass. The concrete highway. In spite of being up to 12 lanes wide in some areas, the Johannesburg Ring Road is frequently clogged with traffic. The Gillulis Interchange, built on an old farm and the point at which the N3 Eastern Bypass and the R24 Airport Freeway intersect, is the busiest interchange in the Southern Hemisphere. It is claimed that the N1 is the busiest road in South Africa. Johannesburg has the most freeways connected to it. It has the N1, N3, N12, N14, N17, R21, R24 and the R59, all leading to Johannesburg. The M1 and M2 freeways were built to direct traffic towards the city centre. These two freeways are congested due to mass urbanisation. Topic culture Johannesburg is a cultural hub in South Africa and has a wide variety of cultural venues, making it a prominent area for many creative and cultural industries. Johannesburg is home to the National School of Arts, the University of Witwatersrand's School of the Arts and the South African Ballet Theatre, as well as the Johannesburg Art Gallery and other prominent cultural landmarks, such as the Mary Fitzgerald Square and numerous other museums, theatres, galleries and libraries. The Johannesburg City Library is located in the Central Business District of Johannesburg. Topic museums and galleries Specialist museums cover subjects such as Africana, costume, design, fossils, geology, military history, medical, pharmacy, photography and transportation networks such as railways. Gold Reef City, a living museum, was originally part of the Crown Mines Complex, where gold was mined to a depth of 3,000 meters 9, feet. The Market Theatre stages plays, comedy shows, and musical performances. The following is a list of some of the museums and galleries that can be found in Johannesburg. AECI Dynamite Factory Museum The AECI Dynamite Factory Museum, housed in the 1895 residence of a mining official, records the history of explosives, with particular emphasis on their use in the mining industry. Adler Museum of Medicine History of Medicine, brainchild of Dr. Cyril Adler, was formally inaugurated 1962. The museum's role was to collect and preserve for posterity all material that would illustrate the history of medicine in general and of South Africa in particular. Apartheid Museum Constitution Hill, Johannesburg. Hector Peterson Museum James Hall Transport Museum Johannesburg Art Gallery. Madiba Freedom Museum named after the former President Mandela's clan. The museum's theme is Mazabalazo and charts South Africa's journey to democracy, Museum Africa. Origins Center Museum located on the campus of the University of the Witwatersrand in Bromfontein. This museum contains some excellent examples of Southern African rock art and the origins of humankind. Bernberg Fashion Museum Bernberg Fashion Museum is a primarily a museum collection, consisting of objects, and explains why and how clothing has changed and how the fashions of the past influence those of today. South African National Museum of Military History Zoology Museum The Zoology Museum is the only natural history museum in 
Johannesburg which is unusual because all the other major cities in South Africa have large public natural history museums. It has retained a unique character as the display specimens are exhibited in finely crafted teak cabinets which allow the viewer to engage directly with scores of objects at close range. Topic entertainment and performing arts Johannesburg hosts many of South Africa's premier music events, such as Ramfest's Johannesburg Leg, in the city and many international tours. Several critically acclaimed musical acts come from Johannesburg, such as Congos, Johnny Clegg, Zebra and Giraffe, Man as Machine, The Parlotones, and Short Straw. The Civic Theatre Complex hosts drama, opera and ballet. Topic public art Johannesburg is home to an extensive portfolio of public art. A diverse and evolving city, Johannesburg boasts a vibrant art scene and a variety of works that range from sculptures to murals to pieces by internationally renowned artists like William Kentridge and Gerhard Marx's Fire Walker. Many pieces are developed through community workshops, such as the Villacazi Street sculptures. Others are functional, such as street furniture found in Hillbrow and the city centre. As part of the Johannesburg Development Agency's JDA policy to make city areas desirable to potential investors, the organization has identified public art as a way to improve the urban experience of the city. The JDA spends 1% of all projects of over R10 million on public art. Topic: <laughs> Crime After the Group Areas Act was scrapped in 1991, Johannesburg was affected by urban blight. Thousands of poor black people, who had been forbidden to live in the city proper, moved into the city from surrounding black townships like Soweto and many immigrants from economically beleaguered and war-torn African nations flooded into South Africa. Many buildings were abandoned by landlords, especially in high-density areas, such as Hillbrow. Many corporations and institutions, including the Stock Exchange, moved their headquarters away from the city centre, to suburbs like Sandton. Reviving the city centre is one of the main aims of the municipal government of Johannesburg. Drastic measures have been taken to reduce crime in the city. These measures include closed circuit television on street corners. As of of December 2008, every street corner in Johannesburg Central is under high tech CCTV surveillance. The CCTV system, operated by the Johannesburg Metropolitan Police Department JMPD, is also able to detect stolen or hijacked vehicles by scanning the number plates of every vehicle traveling through the Central Business District CBD, then comparing them to the Anadis database. The JMPD claims that the average response time by police for crimes committed in the CBD is 60 seconds. Urban renewal has taken place in once no-go zones such as Bromfontein, Newtown, and the CBD. An example is the once gangster paradise Bromfontein now hosting the best rated coffeehouse in the world and Newtown hosting an interactive science museum. Crime levels in Johannesburg have dropped as the economy has stabilized and begun to grow. Between 2001 and 2006, R9 billion, .2 billion has been invested in the city center. Further investment of around R10 billion, .5 billion is expected in the city center alone by 2010. This excludes development directly associated with the 2010 FIFA World Cup. In an effort to prepare Johannesburg for the 2010 FIFA World Cup, local government enlisted the help of Rudy Giuliani, former mayor of New York City, to help bring down the crime rate. As the opening and closing matches of the tournament were played in the city, murders in the Johannesburg municipality amounted to 1,697 in 2007, according to the South African Medical Research Council, a rate of 43 per 100.000 inhabitants. In 2016 that number had sharply declined to 29.4 per 100.000 inhabitants, placing the murder rate at more than half of that of Cape Town and even below national average. Sports Johannesburg's most popular sports by participation are association football, cricket, rugby union, and running. Early each Sunday morning, tens of thousands of runners gather to take part in informal runs organized by several athletic clubs. Topic: <inaudible> Football. The city has several football clubs in the Premier Soccer League (PSL) and the National First Division. 
In the PSL, the top Johannesburg teams are all fierce rivals and include Kaiser Chiefs nicknamed Amahosi, Orlando Pirates nicknamed the Buccaneers, Maroka Swallows and Wits University nicknamed the Clever Boys. They are based at the city's FNB, Orlando, Dobsonville and Bidvest stadiums. Several large-scale league and cup games are played at Soccer City the venue of the 2010 FIFA World Cup Final. First division teams are Jomo Cosmos and FCAK. Catalong City and Alexandra United, play at Alexandra and Ryger Park Stadium respectively. Topic. Cricket Cricket is one of the more popular sports. In cricket, the Highveld Lions represent Johannesburg, the rest of Gauteng as well as the Northwest Province at the Wanderers Stadium which was the venue for the 2003 Cricket World Cup Final in which Australia successfully defended their title against India. Wanderers Stadium hosted what many cricket fans consider the greatest ever ODI match in which South Africa successfully chased down 434 runs. They take part in the first class Supersport Series, the One Day Mountain Domestic Championship and the 2020 Ram Slam T20 Challenge. Johannesburg also hosted matches from and the final of the 2007 ICC World 2020, in which India beat Pakistan in the final. Topic. Rugby The Lions, formerly the Cats, represent Johannesburg, North West and Mpumalanga in the Southern Hemisphere's Super Rugby competition, which includes teams from South Africa, Australia, Argentina, Japan and New Zealand. The Golden Lions compete in the Curry Cup, which they have won on ten occasions. They are housed at the Ellis Park Stadium, which also hosted the IRB 1995 Rugby World Cup Final, which the South African Springboks defeated the New Zealand All Blacks. Economy Johannesburg is one of the world's leading financial centers and it is the economic and financial hub of South Africa, producing 16% of South Africa's gross domestic product, and accounts for 40% of Gauteng's economic activity. In a 2008 survey conducted by MasterCard, Johannesburg ranked 47 out of 50 top cities in the world as a worldwide center of commerce the only city in Africa. Mining was the foundation of the Witwatersrand's economy, but its importance is gradually declining due to dwindling reserves and service and manufacturing industries have become more significant to the city's economy. While gold mining no longer takes place within the city limits, most mining companies still have their headquarters in Johannesburg. The city's manufacturing industries extend across a range of areas and there is still a reliance on heavy industries including steel and cement plants. The service and other industries include banking, IT, real estate, transport, broadcast and print media, private health care, transport and a vibrant leisure and consumer retail market. Johannesburg has Africa's largest stock exchange, the JSE although it has moved out of the central business district. Due to its commercial role, the city is the seat of the provincial government and the site of a number of government branch offices, as well as consular offices and other institutions. The Witwatersrand Urban Complex is a major consumer of water in a dry region. Its continued economic and population growth has depended on schemes to divert water from other regions of South Africa and from the highlands of Lesotho, the biggest of which is the Lesotho Highlands Water Project, but additional sources will be needed early in the 21st century. The container terminal at City Deep is known to be the largest dry port in the world, with some 50% of cargo that arrives through the ports of Durban and Cape Town arriving in Johannesburg. The city deep area has been declared an IDZ industrial development zone by the Gauteng government. Topic retail Johannesburg's largest shopping centers, measured by gross leasable area GLA, the uniform measure of center size is determined by the International Council of Shopping Centers are Santon City, Eastgate, Mall of Africa, Westgate and Cresta. Melrose Arch is one of its most prestigious. Other centers include Hyde Park Corner, Rosebank, Southgate, the Glen Shopping Center, Johannesburg South, and Clearwater Mall. There were also plans to build a large shopping center, known as the Zonkazizwe Shopping Resort, in Midrand, but these have been indefinitely delayed due to the opening of Mall of Africa. Zonkazizwe means all nations in Zulu language, indicating that the center will cater to the city's diverse mix of peoples and races. Also a complex named Greenstone in Moderfontein has been opened. 
Cradlestone Mall is a new mall named for its location which is close to the Cradle of Humankind, a World Heritage Site. Topic communications and media The city is home to several media groups which own a number of newspaper and magazine titles. The two main print media groups are Independent Newspapers and Naspers Media 24. The country's electronic media is also headquartered in the greater metropolitan region. Beeld is a leading Afrikaans newspaper for the city and the country, while the Sunday newspaper City Press is the third largest selling newspaper in South Africa. The Sowetan is one of a number of titles catering for the black market, although in recent years it competes against newly arrived tabloids. The Mail and Guardian is an investigative liberal newspaper, while The Citizen is a tabloid style paper, and The Star is a local newspaper that mostly covers gouting related issues. The Sunday Times is the most widely read national Sunday newspaper. True Love is the most widely read women's magazine, catering primarily to the up-and-coming middle-class black female market, and published by Media24. The Times is a national newspaper that covers current issues. Media ownership is relatively complicated, with a number of cross-shareholdings which have been rationalized in recent years, resulting in the movement of some ownership into the hands of black shareholders. This has been accompanied by a growth in black editorship and journalism. Johannesburg has a number of regional radio stations such as YFM, Metro FM, Falafala FM, Talk Radio 702, Highveld Stereo now known as 947, 5 FM, UJ FM and Kaya FM and Classic FM. The number of radio stations has increased in recent years as the government has sold off frequencies to private companies. Johannesburg is also the headquarters of state-owned broadcaster South African Broadcasting Corporation and pay broadcast network MultiChoice which distributes MNET and DSTV a digital satellite service, while ETV also has a presence in the city. The city has two television towers, the Hillbrow Tower and the Centec Tower. Johannesburg has four major cellular telecommunications operators, Vodacom, Mountain, Cell C, and Telcom Mobile. Vodacom's global headquarters is located in Midrand. It was formed in 1994, just after the South African elections of 1994. Topic government Upon the creation of the Metropolitan Municipality in 2000 the city was subdivided into 11 regions, simply named Region 1 to Region 11. These were reorganized in 2006 into the current seven regions named alphabetically Region A to Region G, as shown on the map left. As of 2006 the seven regions are Region A, Dipslut, Kya Sand Region B, Randburg, Rosebank, Emerentia, Greenside, Melville, Northcliffe, Rosebank, Parktown, Parktown North Region C, Rudaport, Constantia Kloof, Northgate Region D, Dornkop, Soedo, Dobsonville, Protea Glen Region E, Alexandra, Winburg, Sandon Region F, Inner City Region G, Orange Farm, Ennerdale, Lanasia. In the 2016 municipal elections, the ruling party, the ANC, lost their majority in Johannesburg for the first time since taking power in 1994, claiming only 44.12% of the vote. The Economic Freedom Fighters and Democratic Alliance both agreed to vote for the DA mayoral candidate, Herman Mashaba, who was sworn into power as the first Democratic Alliance mayor of Johannesburg on the 22nd of August 2016. Topic. Coat of arms The Johannesburg Municipal Council assumed a coat of arms in 1907, and had it granted by the College of Arms on 20 August 1907. The design, by W. Sanford Cotterill, consisted only of a shield, vert, a fess between three battery stamps or i.e. a green shield displaying a golden horizontal stripe between three battery stamps. The motto was Fortiter et Rect. In May 1939, the College of Arms granted a crest, a gold lion resting a paw on a battery stamp, and supporters two sable antelope, each with a gold mural crown around its neck and a gold star on its shoulder. The full achievement of arms was registered with the Transvaal Provincial Administration in November 1951 and at the Bureau of Heraldry in November 1966. The Greater Johannesburg Metropolitan Council assumed a new coat of arms in 1997, and registered it at the Bureau of Heraldry in November 1997. The arms are vert, a fret couped or, the mascal voided gules, between in chief and in base respectively four shield thongs argent, behind the shield a spine erect or, plumed sable. 
The supporters are two young golden lions, each wearing a red and blue beaded collar. The motto is Unity in Development. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Education. Johannesburg has a well-developed higher education system of both private and public universities. Johannesburg is served by the public universities University of the Witwatersrand and the University of Johannesburg. University of Johannesburg was formed on 1 January 2005, when three separate universities and campuses—Rand Afrikaans University, Technikon Witwatersrand, and the Johannesburg campuses of Vista University—were merged. The new university offers education primarily in English and Afrikaans, although courses may be taken in any of South Africa's official languages. The University of the Witwatersrand is one of the leading universities in Africa, and is famous as a center of resistance to apartheid. It is attached to the world's third largest hospital, the Chris Hani Baragwanath Hospital, located in Soweto. The University of Pretoria's business school the Gordon Institute of Business Science is located in Ilovo, Johannesburg. Many private colleges are also situated in Johannesburg, such as Damelin, CTI, Lyceum College and the South African campus of Monash University six of the other campuses are in Australia, while the eighth is in Malaysia, as well as the Midran Graduate Institute which is located in Midran. Johannesburg also has one of several film schools in the country, one of which has won an Academy Award for Best Foreign Student Film in 2006. The South African School of Motion Picture and Live Performance, or AFDA for short, is situated in Auckland Park. Johannesburg also has three teacher training colleges and a technical college. There are numerous kindergartens, primary schools and high schools in the region. Tourism Johannesburg has not traditionally been known as a tourist destination, but the city is a transit point for connecting flights to Cape Town, Durban, and the Kruger National Park. Consequently, most international visitors to South Africa pass through Johannesburg at least once, which has led to the development of several attractions for tourists. Recent additions have centered on history museums, such as the Apartheid Museum with related visits to Constitution Hill and the Hector Peterson Museum. There is also a large industry around visiting former townships, such as Soweto and Alexandra. Most visitors to Soweto see the Mandela Museum, which is located in the former home of Nelson Mandela. Visitors can get a feeling for the layout of the city by visiting the Carlton Centre, in the southeastern area of the CBD, which has an observation deck on the 50th floor. At 223 metres 732 feet, it is the highest office building in Africa and affords sweeping vistas of the city and surrounds. The nearby Museum Africa covers the history of the city of Johannesburg, as well as housing a large collection of rock art. Also a large draw for tourists is Gold Reef City, a theme park which offers a depiction of mining life at the turn of the 19th century, including an underground mine tour. Other attractions include a large amusement park and a popular tribal dancing show. On the culture front, the city has several art museums, such as the Johannesburg Art Gallery, which featured South African and European landscape and figurative paintings. The Market Theatre Complex attained notoriety in the 1970s and 1980s by staging anti-apartheid plays, and has now become a centre for modern South African playwriting. The Joburg Theatre is South Africa's foremost receiving house of live entertainment—presenting world-class theatre, both local and international. The suburbs of Melville, Newtown, Parkhurst, Norwood, Rosebank and Greenside are popular for their bohemian atmosphere, street life, and many restaurants and bars. Shopping is often popular with tourists, as the city offers a range of venues and experiences, from numerous upmarket shopping malls such as Sandon City, Mall of Africa, and Nelson Mandela Square, to various markets and flea markets, such as the Oriental Plaza and the Rosebank Flea Market, the latter are popular for souvenirs and African art. See above, cultural tourists also visit the Mai Mai Market, Azinyangeni, the place of healers, located on the eastern wing of the city centre dedicated to traditional herbs and traditional healers. The Cradle of Humankind a UNESCO World Heritage Site is 25 kilometres 16 miles to the northwest of the city. 
The Sterkfontein fossil site is famous for being the world's richest hominid site and produced the first adult Australopithecus africanus and the first near-complete skeleton of an early Australopithecine. Other attractions in this area include the Lesady Cultural Village, while Magaliesburg and the Hartbysport Dam are popular weekend and holiday destinations for Johannesburg residents. The Origins Centre Museum, see below, covers the origins of humankind in Africa, and houses an extensive collection of rock art. Johannesburg and environs offer various options to visitors wishing to view wildlife. The Johannesburg Zoo is one of the largest in South Africa. The Lion Park Nature Reserve, next to Lesady Cultural Village, is home to over 80 lions and various other game, while the Krugersdorp Nature Reserve, a 1,500 hectares game reserve, is a 40-minute drive from the city centre. The De Wilt Cheetah Centre in the Magaliesburg runs a successful breeding program for cheetah, wild dog and other endangered species. The Rhino and Lion Nature Reserve, situated in the Cradle of Humankind on 1,200 hectares of the typical highveld of Gouting also runs a breeding program for endangered species including Bengal tigers, Siberian tigers and the extremely rare white lion. To the south, 11 kilometers (6.8 miles) from the city center, is the Klipperviersberg Nature Reserve, home to large mammals and hiking trails. Topic: Twin towns and sister cities. Johannesburg is twinned with. Topic notes. Topic references. Early Johannesburg, its buildings and people. Hannes Meering, Human and Rousseau, 1986. 143 pages. ISBN 0-7981-1456-8. Gold. 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 The Johannesburg Gold Rush. Eric Rosenthal, A.D. Donker, 1970, ISBN 0-949937-64-9 Johannesburg, The Elusive Metropolis. Sarah Nuttall. Duke University Press. 9 January 2005. 210 pages. ISBN 0-8223-6610-X. The Corner House, The Early History of Johannesburg. Alan Patrick Cartwright. MacDonald, 1965. 295 pages. Topic. External links Official website of the City of Johannesburg Gauteng Provincial Government Local Government, Municipal Structures Act 117 of 1998 Johannesburg Tourism Official Website City of Johannesburg